because we we have one assimilate. We're at 34, who gets us 38. Snow drops the play. It'll draw two, and both of our stone drops will boost by four. Now we get Brothens, of course, and that'll be it. GG. So today we're going to be playing a spy deck. This was requested to play spying with just one seditious aristocrats. Not really sure why we're playing just one seditious aristocrats, but shouldn't be too big a deal. It's just a bronze five version card. And it's not the center point of this deck because we're not going all in on spies. So what we're going to do here is we're we'll playing imprisonment just for added control. I like imprisonment when you have a deck that doesn't have a lot of control like this one. So it gives you options to lock down. Well, not lock down because that's different leader ability to lock the problematic opponent's card. So I like having imprisonment. We're going to test Crystal Skull. I'm pretty sure Lampshin's better because Lampshin lets you Dead Man's Tongue. It lets you Emissary it. So I think it's much better. But I want to try it in case we need to put it on an Imperial Enforcers early for a long round. Jin's probably better. We're just testing this one out. Uh, as far as the deck here, we have Artois as a finisher. Probably not surprising. We're not playing a lot of Assimilate. So he's pretty much our only Assimilate card. But his value as a finisher is really good because we still put out Spying quite a bit. If you Usurper Officer, Usurper Officer is really good because we're going to play stuff that generates points with Spies. He makes two Spies. He's a good tempo play in round two or three. He plays for 12. That's pretty good. We don't have a lot of solid 12s. And I wanted to play him because I haven't played him in a while. So he seems like he'd fit pretty well in the deck. And creating two Spying units is good because we get we get stuff for that. So I'm playing him. Brothen's here. We're going to play him. He's our other assimilate card, but he's just here for value. We can create any of the bronze disloyal units from our deck. We have all of them in our deck, so whichever option we need, we can get from him. That's pretty good. He just plays for a lot of points, and he's really good, and he's going to be our deck because we're playing a spying deck. So We have the Ku and Joachim. So normally if Ku, Joachim, and a secondary target, so like um, sometimes it's going to be a Cantarella, something like that. We have our second Ku, which is going to be on a spying card. It could be on anything we put spying on. It could be on one of our bronze spies if we really think that's a good idea. But Ku's really good. And we have it in our deck. And we have Joaquim. Joaquim would be a little careful with because we don't want to pull off something early. So like you don't want to pull your Artois with, jo with Joaquim. So you got to keep that in mind. But he's still a very good card. We have Ramon. Ramon's here for our soldiers. We have two soldiers that are pretty good. We Well, really good. We have Imperial Enforcers. This is one you really want to do. You want to Ramon, Imperial Enforcers, play the Imperial Enforcers. Then whenever you play a spying unit, you get two damage pings. That's really good. And you can save those up and damage something. And the Ramon will protect one of them quite well with the two armor. So really nice to have him in here. And we have a secondary target in our Illusionists. So Illusionists, everyone knows, is pretty good. We got two four provision spots left. And since I wanted to run Ramon with the Enforcers, I went with the Illusionist as a backup target for him. But yeah, so Ramon has a target of Enforcer and Illusionist in this deck. If you're not playing Devotion, you can also add Mushy Truffle for another one, for another way to make Illusionist, but this isn't really an Illusionist spam deck. So we're not going to do that. You could play... Well, I'll get to that later. We'll we're gonna keep going through the deck right now. We're playing Invocation. Because of course we are. I don't have to explain this. We have Dead Man's Tongue for thinning. Really nice. Lampshade helps with this, but we're trying out Crystal Skull now. We have Fergus. Uh, again, we get a charge for each spine we put out. And theoretically, we should have one or two Imperial Enforcers. That'll give us six damage if we have two when we play him. That's really nice. And also boost the Seditious Aristocrats by three. So this is really good if we can get to a situation. Like, it's not good if we just throw it down by itself as a seven for seven. But it's not bad at that it's one of our highest plays if they don't have to target but it really helps out in the longer round when we need the spyings fair card does too but we don't have a lot of special cards for him we've got one two three four so he won't be throwing out a ton of spyings with his ability but he's still really good and he helps us thin our deck the two blight makers thin our deck give us good tempo plays one assassination of five version slot uh, i went with this because of i want another special for fair card it could be anything this could be a what's the lock guy alba armored cavalry it could be an Elba Armor Cavalry, Nilf Guardian Knight, something like that if you want. The two Imperial Enforcers, the one Seditious Aristocrat, these are main spine cards. If you are playing two Seditious Aristocrats because someone didn't request this deck, you can cut the Assassination for it as well. That gives you the second one. A Duchess and Informant, 
The two Thanadid current turncoats, I like this card. And it's a potential target for your Crystal Skull, but you're going to have to wait a turn probably. So, it's pretty good. And it's our way to deploy Gift Spying. We have two ways to Gift Spying on Deploy. Turncoat, and then we have Fergus do it as well. And Faircart can put it out. So, you shouldn't have too much of a problem targeting something good for Artwad later in the game. And we have two Illusionists, like I mentioned, as a backup target for Ramon. And they're just pretty good in general. The Mage Assassins, they went with the uh, Blight Makers. And we have Emissary and Mage Infiltrator. So, that's the deck. Pretty good. It's not... I've been having, a... I've been having good success with it. I think there are a couple changes that could be made, but I'm not quite sure what they are yet, other than making this a Lampshin, but we're testing this out for now. But yeah, this deck seems pretty good. It's been working out better than I expected, which is good. And the other option I wanted to try, but we're not doing right now, one thing you can do, if you want more Imperial Enforcers, you could try running either Vilgaforts, Renegade, or Operator. Vilgaforts, Renegade does this round one if you need it. Uh, what you do is you put an Imperial Enforcers in their graveyard, and then you just spam Illusionists on it. Could be pretty fun to try out. Kind of similar to playing Operator on the Imperial Enforcers and swimming at Duchess Informants. Similar idea. But we could try that out as well. Anyway, that'll be it for this deck. Let's go see how it does. Alright, first game here. Let's see what we go up against. Kind of curious what it's going to be. Either way, it should be pretty interesting. Like I said, I've had a more success than I expected this deck. It certainly has refinements left. That's for sure, but it's been doing pretty well. Having the imprisonment um, ability is really helpful against decks with um, any kind of engine they need to set up, especially around one engine. You can deal that pretty easily. And I've seen a lot of hand buff. And we do alright versus that. Okay, so it appears we're going again against a. Uh, tactical decision could be anything. Could be mill, could be hyper thin, could be you know, really anything. Most likely one of those two, though. And look, now that I said mill's an option, and acknowledge it as a deck, which always loses, but acknowledge it as a deck, it won't be mill. That's how it works. So we got Blightmaker here. A fine vintage. Good thinning. You do lose two points if you can't hit something with the Mage Assassin, but I'm not playing anything else in my hand, so this is what's going to be. Now, if we need it, we can put the Crystal Skull on the Imperial Enforcers and go for that kind of round, or we can put it on the Thanated, Thanated Turncoat. This is why I wanted to try it out, but I don't if think it'll make too much of a difference hunger, here. We do have our second Blightmaker still as well. Definitely want to be going for that. Hopefully he doesn't have both. No Dead Man's Tongue. It's a little unfortunate. And we can't actually play Fair Cart except with Coup. So we're going to need to stop spying or play Joaquim for that. But that's, an, that's a long ways away. He's going to have to play some kind of like big card for me to want to do that. There's Dead Man's Tongue. So we got both Blightmakers. He got both Dead Man's Tongues. Fair enough. Or he got a Blight Waker and a Dead Man's Tongue. Not both Dead Man's Tongues, a gold card. If I could use two, I definitely would. Not sure why it's taking him so long to pick what he wants here, but he'll do it. Let's see, I think we go for a turncoat now. Yeah, let's go with a turncoat. We'll put our crystal skull on it. Start zapping this. Not the best target for our Artwad, but we can put more spines out later on. Especially with Fergus. Fergus can give us a bunch of options when we play him, because we'll target three things. Yeah, this deck thins quite a bit. We got the two Blight Makers. The Joachim thins by two. The fair cart thins by one. Dead man's tongue thins by two. That thins seven. Invocation puts one back on top, yes. But we do have seven thinning. And Ku goes back on top as well. So we thin by seven. We're not going down to like one card. We're going down to like four, I think. Four or five. Whoa. 
That was a scorch, boys. Um, what are we facing? That's really weird. Round one scorch for 11. He spores our crystal skull. And then when we boosted it with emissary, he scorched it. It's some kind of no unit deck. <clears throat> it's pretty weird. Let's hope Rothen's here. He committed Scorch, so we can commit something too. This is a really big play here. We'll do six damage to him, and then play for six, so 12. It's pretty good. And now we're significantly up. Alzer's Thunder. I know what this is. Look, he's played Scorch and Alzer's Thunders. <clears throat> this. This is an Alzer deck. <laughs> Nilfgaard has lots of specials for damage. You have Tourney Joust, you have Assassination, and you have Coated Weapons. If you're going to run Alzer's Thunder, it's probably because you want it for either the spell tag, or you do not want putting things on top of their deck. You wouldn't want to put something on top of their deck. Okay, look at this. See, we passed here on 8. He doesn't have a lot of choices here. He's going to have to leader. That's really good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's playing Alzer deck. Otherwise, he wouldn't run Alzer's Thunder over those cards. I think. And Scorch kind of gives it away, too, now that we're thinking about it as an Alzer turn. Because that's a spell with 13 provisions that gives you your, um... Well, it gives you some options. That's for sure. The high options. There's our Roderick. Hopefully we get a good gold out of him here. No, he gets his owner Bancy out. That's probably good for him, honestly. It's kind of hoping we get like a Brathens or something. Yeah, but we got leader. So we got the leader there when we passed. I was kind of thinking we might. So that's good. Now we go to round two. We could try and force the issue here. Get rid of the owls there. We have Invocation to take it. We don't want to do that early in case he's playing Cantarella. This hand's good. The only thing not amazing in it is an Illusionist, but Illusionist isn't bad either. And if he, okay, I was gonna say, if he just passes, I need something to play. And that's what we, what's what we kept the Illusionist for. So he's gonna for, for, uh, perform his function here quite well. That is why we kept him. Because they just pass, you want to throw away a card that's not fantastic in the next round. Instead of being forced to play something like our Imperial Enforcers, which we kind of need for the Ramon. So this is Arist Seditious Aristocrats isn't bad. Duchess Informant's okay, but I think we'd rather have something else. Aristocrats, we get what? Three spying from Fergus. Aristocrats, not bad. And then Nilfgaard Mirror, it's really good. I will want Emperor, though. So be my super emperor. All right, that's okay. That's okay. We just open our moan here. We know he's running Alzer's Thunder as his removal card, so he can't kill this enforcer. If he's playing multiple damage, he can. If he's playing stuff like uh, assassinate code of weapons, turn down in addition to the Alzer's Thunder, which I find unlikely, he still can't kill it in one turn. And then we go with the, um, what's it called? The second Imperial Enforcer's next turn, if he plays a unit. He might have a lock for this, honestly. Yeah, he has a lock for it. Alright, that's that's fine. We'll play this Imperial Enforcer's. I think he's played both of his Alzer's Thunders thus far. Um, I guess we hit this. He's probably going to kill it with Attorney Joust. We haven't sent any four damage cards out of him, so he might have Attorney Joust. There's the Alzer. Now we have a couple options here. We can lead our ability to lock it. I like that option. We can invocation it. I don't like that because if he's playing Cantharella, he can take it back and play it. So I think we just lock it with leader. And now it's at three health. If we want to, we can coup it then and then play it on our own field before we play invocation. We want to hold off on that because if we invocation it and then play it, he can invocation it and play it back with Joaquin. 
And since if we invocation it, we could draw it with fair cart by playing coup. That's better than if we play with Joaquim, but I think we're going to hold off. We're going to hold off on that. I don't want to do it right now in case it gives him a way to play it back. And he could have something like, um, with this many spells, he might be counting on playing it with more than once with a seer. And if we kill, he could a seer it. I mean, that's a really low possibility, but it exists. So we'll just put spying on it. Now our Artois can create it. Okay, there's the second Elzer's Thunder. I think that was the wrong target, though. I think Impair Enforcers is where it's at. We could Fair Cart, we could Seditious Aristocrats. There's choices here. We could go Joachim. We probably don't, we don't want to Joachim Elzer, right? We could just throw it on Seditious Aristocrats now, it gets its full value. What's in our deck? Uh, we'd get Enforcers, Emperor, or Illusionist. That's not bad. Let's throw this down, though. Go to a 5. He can't... He's out of Elzer's Thunder, so I think he doesn't have one to kill this. And it'll get its full value eventually. Anyway, there's a Cyanthus' Blaze. Whoa, okay. That's a... That's a thing. I... I understand why this is here. It's to set up Scorch. I don't agree with it, but I understand. Perfect, Jor Usurper Emperor. Give us some charges. Give us some points on our aristocrats. They went to eight. And let's just kill this in case he has a purify. If he purifies Elzer, he can't use the order in the same turn, so I don't care. If he purifies that, he can, and I would rather him not do that. That's why we didn't bother killing the Elzer. Even though it could be purified. Because if he purifies it, it's not going to get any of its abilities off. We have a chance to either coup it or invocation it still. There's the purify. We just talked about this. Like I said, we don't care. We'll just go fair cart and we'll coup it. So it's dead. Kill this. And then play our Elzer. We'll kill this thing in its range row. If... The reason we kill the one in the range throw is because if he takes Alzer and put it, like he copies Alzer or something and puts it in his range throw, we can just hit it with Assassinate for six and it dies. He's probably going to play with Joachim though, so that's probably not going to happen. We'll make another Alzer here. Probably the best target here. We will get a nine with our invocation. Like I said, if he's if he's not paying attention, just puts this ranged with his owner Mancy, we assassinate it. And he probably quits. But otherwise, we'll just have to invocation it. It won't be too bad either way. If he Joachim's it, we definitely invocation it. If he Onermancy's it. Oh, Onermancy? Remember, you have to put this melee. Don't put it ranged. You're in guard too. You know how assassination works. Oh, come on, man. Why you gotta be like this? Don't put it ranged. And the only thing in its row... When they could have assassinate. Come on, man. Well, this looks like a win. It's got no more Scorch blowout, and it wouldn't do right on this anyway. He's used his invocation. Uma's curse, I don't think this could get him anything that wins. And if it does, we still have invocation. Fallowbore does play for 12, that's not bad, but he needs 47. I I cannot fail. We can Fergus, by the way, look at this, if you Fergus and they already have Spying, you still give them the status again, so it counts as A plus 3 on these. I don't remember if that was always the way, it probably was. Just, yeah, there's the GG. All right, game two. Last one was interesting. We kind of exploited his deck a little bit. We won the round one with a lot of tempo. Well, he won the round one. We went with a lot of tempo, and then he was forced to use his leader ability. And then that helped him find his cards, but we have too much control with the double imprisonment charges in round three for him to really get his stuff going. Unfortunate for him. Good for us.
Now this game, on the other hand, hopefully we can be a little more aggressive. Or show like the full long round of three. Okay. So this is Death Wish or Vi. If it's Vi... If it's Vi, we have a problem. Okay, we drew, we drew Invocation. Our problem's a little bit alleviated. And this is Crystal Skull, so it's 100% a Vi player. Which means we're going to need every control tool we have to kill everything with Consume. We kill everything with Consume, and we just lead our ability to other ones we can't kill. Uh, we have a chance. That, that's our plan here. We just have to kill every Consume. If he has no Consumes, we have a shot. Otherwise, this game's over. Yeah, definitely Vi player. There's the Slizzard. We have to Invocation this, because we can't let him have this. It's not a great Invocation target, and now if he plays Vi and leaves it out, we can't actually do anything about it. But we cannot let him have that Slizzard. So we have to Invocation it. That's how it goes. Now he plays another Consume card. And then we have to Assassinate it. That's fine. And then I don't know if he'll have Fork. Okay, we can go for our Blightmakers then. That's good. We definitely want to get those going. Now, the thing is here, he might not have... Because we're, I'm 100% willing to throw out both my leader abilities this round just to stop him consuming. If we do that, I'm not sure he actually has enough. Like, I don't think he has enough consume cards without haunt to give us a problem. Probably, we, a second Blightmaker could hit that. That'd be bad. We we'll just get Turncoat going. Enforcers wouldn't be bad either. Go Enforcers. If, if he's... Well, he's Vi. Pretty sure. And Vi has no control. Like, sometimes they run a Parasite. But they almost never have any control just because if Prince Villum gives it to you. Like, smart playing around the assassination there. Uh, I think we just leader it. It's probably the best option. Leader it and then play our Blightmaker or something. I don't really want a Blightmaker though because it might hit the... Uh, one guy. We could go for a turncoat. That gives a little bit of value. Yeah, let's do that. You weren't expecting this, were you? Then we'll zap this. We could save up all the charges and try and kill it all at once. That might be better, but everything he plays is going to plays is going to thrive it anyway. So, oh well. Okay, so I doubt he has. That's both slizzards gone. Usually they run like. Maybe a Haunt and a Barbagazi or something. A Bar Guest with the two Consume cards and the Haunt. And then a K-Ren sometimes, which I doubt. Oh, he's got the, um... Where at? Uh, we can't let that happen. So that's gonna have to get locked as well. So we'll have to Leader that. And then he'll be out of Leader Charges. If he has any more Consumes, we're in trouble. But I really doubt it. We'll, we could save this turncoat charge a turn, but there's not really a point to that, so we'll just zap it out. And we can go for our Blightmaker now, since he's consumed the guy on his own. The Archispore. 13 point lead's okay, but the thing is, I don't think he has any consumes left, so he's gonna have to leader charge for all of his Vi's. Yeah, so there's a Vi's and a leader charge. If he had a consume card, he would play it. Which means we know his next play will be Vi leader. Because he doesn't want to lose on even. So that will play for... 10, 1 Thrive, and 3, 14. We'll go with this. And we can zap this. And we'll hold on to the Imperial Enforcer charges in case we need them. If we need a big swing, we do have Fergus... He'll play for seven and give us three charges. And then reset our one card, the turncoat. So when we play him, we'll get four damage plus the one we currently have. We'll get five. And we will gain seven points. That's probably what we're going to do here. So this just Aristocrats plays for just seven. So yeah, this is better. Give them all spying. We'll hold off to these charges for the Aristocrat at least. Actually, we can kill off the um, Bruxa Blitz. 
Let's hold off. If he has a consume card, he now has to play it. And if we, if he does, we need these Imperial Enforcer charges to kill it. So he gains a point this way. Okay, so he shuffled a special back to his deck. This plays for 9, 10. That's quite nice. And I don't think he has what it takes anymore. We need these. The reason we didn't kill this Bruxa, even though I gave him a couple extra points, is we need the charges in case he had a bar guest or something, right? Then we'd assassinate it and hit it with the charges. Hopefully that's a kill. Or a Barbagazi or something. We need the we need the charges to be ready for a consume card. Although I was very confident he didn't have one. He might have been he might have gone for something like his Nagalfar. Well, Nagafar probably wouldn't get him to consume because he had Fire Rat, but you get the idea. You might have gone for a way to get one. Uh, I think we push here. Normally, you do not push versus Vi as like a standard thing. You don't do it because it gives them big carryover. But I want Haunt Gone. That's the worst possible card in our deck. That's unfortunate. But uh, the reason we're doing this here is I want Haunt Gone, and I don't think he has any consumes left without Haunt. If he does, I want them gone. So let's see what he does here. He's deciding... Oh, he wants a Slizzard back. Okay, we'll just assassination that. That's gone. Still no consume card for you. And what's next? Owner Mancy. This is going to have to be Haunt. If this isn't Haunt, I don't think he's playing it. No, it's just going to be this. Okay, I see. He's going to go for another Slizzard. He might still have a Haunt. Satisfaction guaranteed. Oh, this is gets him ahead, right? Oh, he might have a Haunt. But he can consume now, and it's going to be every turn. Let's just pass. His Vi has no carryover. It's only at a 10. And if he's running this many ways to make Slizzard, I don't think he has a Haunt. Usually you play Haunt because it gives you two Consume cards in Vi. It's like a power card on its own, and it gives you two Consumes. He's playing the Incubus instead, I think. So I don't think he has the Haunt. Uh, we want Brathens here. Uh, no Brathens. But our hand's looking pretty strong. We're out of ways to kill a consume card though, so that's a little bit bad. There's a snowdrop. That's a good card for our turncoat, because snowdrop's not bad. We could use our Artois to we could dead man's tongue, fair car, and then use Artois to create a snowdrop and try and find our Brathens. I like that. Right now we just have like Were Rat, um Slizzard, and Bruxa. Yeah, he shuffled a special back in. I'm trying to think what we want here. It's probably Turncoat. And then Usurper Emperor. Artuad. Should be interesting. We can also coup this Snowdrop as well, but I think we want to go Fair Cart, Dead Man's Tongue next. Try and thin our deck, then draw our Brothens. It'd also be pretty good to get an Imperial Enforcer so we can combine it with... Oh, Iris Companions and... Iris. He discards the Iris. Kind of expected. Um, this is weird. Not gonna lie. This is a little weird. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. But my guess is he's gonna try and he's trying to play Vi out of his hand for some reason. Let's banish the Slizzard. It's not good here. And Infiltrator probably. And boost our Fair Cart. Yeah, we boost Fair Cart. Give him our spying out. There's Mata. He's helping us thin here. Snowdrop. Let's we'll zap the, uh, probably Snowdrop, right? Yeah. We can coup the fair cart. 
or coup the snowdrop. We probably play Impair Enforcers now. We have to play it before the Usurper. So it's either going to be this turn, or we go for our uh, Illusionist. Illusionist doesn't get as much value, it's just going to be a 5 point play, which is a little unfortunate. Although it can give us a Bruxa, which has a couple of Thrives in it, so that would be okay. But I want to try and draw Brathens here, and then if we do draw it, we shuffle back in the Illusionist. So I want a card to keep the shuffle back in if we do draw the Brathens. So we're going to do this before we play. Okay, Brathens is the only card left in our deck. Put these two back in, shuffle them. It's worth a try. Worth a try. Those are Banshee, uh, and we can't kill that now, so that's unfortunate. He's gonna get to consume. Play Enforcers. We could hit the Desert Banshee, but I don't want to. Just, just in case he doesn't play the Vi this turn. He will, though. There it is. 13 points, 14 points for him. And he has one way to play Vi. That's and one card left. So one of his plays is going to be a 13 point or a 16 point Vi. Right? He's gonna get a 16 point Vi for one play. And then whatever his last card is, is his last card. This will be the Bruxa. He's gonna a Thrive or two. We have what, Usurper Emperor and Artois. It gives us actually maybe three thrives. Oops, that's not the right card. Uh, hopefully it doesn't cost us the game. Really meant to click that Bruxa right next to it. Whatever, it'll be fine. And he's going for spores. That's a big reset, actually. Nine points. His last play gets him to 49. We'll zap this, because now why not? And Artuad we'll do later. Usurper Emperor here plays for 14. All I Counting the two charges we get. And we actually got a reset on our turncoat as well. So 15 point play. Very nice to have that. We kill the snowdrop. So he goes to 44, 45. This is the plus one. And we need 11, 12. Our twad gets us there. Um, not with any of the raw point values. Because we we have one assimilate. We're at 34. He gets us 38. Snow drops the play. It'll draw two and both of our strong drops will boost by four. Now we get Brathens, of course. And that'll be it. GG. Really should have clicked that Bruxa. I meant to, but oh well, it happens sometimes. So what do I think about the deck? Would I change? All that good stuff. Uh, I think we're definitely changing Crystal Skull for Lampshin. I wanted to try out the Crystal Skull on the early rounds, maybe like an early turncoat or Enforcers, like I said. Don't think that's the great way. Go back to Magic Lamp, I think. And then the other thing is we requested just to run one Seditious Aristocrats. I think we want two. I do think we want two. So we'll go for that. Put the second one in. I think it's what I'd do when you cut the assassination. It's probably what I'd do. We'll go back to this for now. We'll look at the deck. I like the bronzes mostly. Uh, Mage Infiltrator did all right. It's three damage. Is kind of why it's in here. Because if you have a... Was it? Enforcers out and play Infiltrator. You can do four damage to something, which is nice. I like that. And then you can do... Well, it's also really good versus the Andrega Larvos if you're playing monsters because it kills them both. That's nice. One of the best answers in the game to those. But other than that, I like the deck. I think the there can, there's certainly refinements to be made. For example, the Ramon, Illusionist, and Enforcers group. I'm not sure Ramon we need, but he did, did work out well in that one game. But that's one thing to be <coughs> keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is if you want to go all in on spies, this is not all in on spies. 
we're playing a spying deck, we do rely on the spying. We're not all in, right? We're not spamming out extra enforcers with Duchess's Informants, stuff like that. We're not doing that. You could do that, which might be something fun to try out. But this is what I came up with. I want more middle of the road, more solid overall deck. And it kind of worked out pretty well. I did like it. The only thing I kind of think we might have issues with is we don't have, we have good like short round plays and stuff like the Joachim Coup. But if you're going to go all in on spies like Operator, Vilgaforts, and then I think you might have to cut those, which hurts the short round, which is why I didn't go for those decks. Went for this instead. I think it's more well-rounded. But you certainly could try that out, and it would be, in would be interesting. But overall, I like the deck. It was a good suggestion. Although, if you want to explain why we only play one Aristocrats as a request, you can. I'm a little curious. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.